breaking news welcome to today's headlines Unam de Kanu narrates how he, was, how he was abducted from Kenya. Unam de Kanu narrates how he was abducted from Kenya. To my dear listeners from wherever you're listening from, please stay tuned as I read today's news. Embattled leader of the indigenous people of the Afral Ipop, Unam de Kanu, has narrated how he was abducted from the Republic of Kenya and to Nigeria. Unam de Kanu, in a letter written by his counsel, Aloy Ejima, called to the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. Abubakar Malami revealed that Kano entered into the Republic of Kenya with a British passport on May 12, 2021 and later settled down temporarily in the country. He further stated that the IPOB leader on 19th of June 2021 drove to Jomo Kenyatta on a personal errand and while trying to pull over at a parking lot of the airport, he was accosted by, two, by about 20 armed men who uncovered him, covered his face, and bundled him into their vehicle to an unknown destination. The counsel to the Biafra Lagitator claimed that Kanu was tortured, maltreated, chained, confined, to a location without being given the reason for his arrest. The letter written by Ejima Kou dated March 22, 2022 reads, We are solicitors to Mazi Unamdekanu, on whose behalf and instruction we must respectfully bring this complaint pursuant to Section 1A and B, Section 5, Section C, 6 of the Anti-Torture Act 2017 and Section 174 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999. According to the information given to us by our client, the details of this complaint are as follows. Our client entered the Republic of Kenya on his British passport on May 12, 2021, and was admitted as such at Chomo Kenyatta International Airport, Nairobi. After his admission, he settled in at a temporary location in Nairobi, Kenya. On June 19, 2021, our client drove himself to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, Nairobi, Kenya, on a personal errand. As soon as he pulled to a stop at the parking lot and alighted from his vehicle, about 20 well armed persons violently accosted and abducted him, handcuffed him, blindfolded him bundled him into a vehicle and spread away. His abductors took him to a secret private location, not a police station, somewhere in Nairobi, Kenya, and chained him to the floor. He was neither shown a warrant of arrest or extradition or told why he was abducted. The, abductor, the abductors did not tell him who they are, but from their conversations, he surmised that they were working for the government of Nigeria, G-O-N, government of Nigeria and its security agencies. While chained to, while chained to the floor, his abductors took turns beating and torturing him to the point that he fainted several times and was intermittently revived when they pour cold water 
upon him during the tortures and beatings. His abductors taunted him, verbally degraded him, and called him a separatist Igbo Jew. They also told him he will be expelled to Nigeria to face death. He was chained to the floor for eight days and was thus forced to relieve himself of urine and excrement where he was chained. Throughout the duration of his secret captivity and torture, he was not allowed to bath and was fed only on bland bread once a day and given non-sanitary water to drink, except for the presence of his abductors. He was in solitary confinement the entire eight days. Section 32 of the Anti-Torture Act states that secret detention places, solitary confinement in communicado or other similar forms of detention where torture may be carried on are prohibited. The Inhuman Treatment Cruelty and degradation to which the abductors subjected our client and the external and internal injuries is sustained therefrom coupled with his pre-existing poor health made him live in dread, fear and terror that he was going to die in captivity and his body disappeared. His anguished entreaties to his abductors to get him some medication for his hypertension at condition and physical injuries were inhumanly refused and is pleased to be taken before a court or given official police or other law enforcement facility or allowed a phone call were flatly refused. Throughout the eight day duration of the captivity and torture of our client, his torturers were in constant telephone conversations with and taking directives and instructions from the Nigerian High Commissioner to Kenya and other Nigerian officials. Section 2 of the Anti-Torture Act makes a person complicit in torture when it is inflicted by or at the instigation of or with the consent of a acquaintance of a public official or other person acting in an official capacity. Similarly, Section 8 to provide that a superior military, police or law enforcement officer or senior government official who issues an order to a lower ranking personnel to torture a victim for whatever purpose is equally liable as the principal. To my dear listeners, from wherever you're listening from, please stay tuned and please do drop by at the comment section and let us know what your view is all about. Thank you. Thank you for listening.